All right, hey, this is Act 2 of the podcast. We're getting right back into it. If you missed Act 1, go back and listen to that thing. Otherwise, this isn't going to make any sense. Okay, see ya. All right, I'm back. You may have heard that um, Kam- uh, Kamala Harris made her uh, pick for running mate for VP. I don't know who the fuck he is. Tim Walls? Do I say Walls? Or do I say Waltz? W A L Z. He's from Minnesota. He's the governor of Minnesota, right? Jeremy, who's in the chat here, he writes, my girlfriend lives in Minnesota. Good God, that's a bummer. Long distance relationship. How did that start? Because you're in uh, Kalamazoo, right? She was kind enough to provide a list of, of some of his accomplishments. Well, that's interesting. So you mean to tell me since the amount of time that uh, the announcement uh, was made, she wrote all of this out first thing in the morning? Here are some of the accomplishments according to Jeremy's better half. He signed into law free breakfast, lunches for school kids K through 12. Signed into law the Minnesota Sick and Safe Leave Law. Okay, so he signed those, but did he like uh, get those sponsored? I mean, did he lead the initiative to get those? I, I wonder who brought those bills up in the first place. I'm curious what type of uh, makeup the Minnesota government is. Is it a... Uh, Is it dominated by Dems in both the House and the Senate? Anyway, signed into law the Minnesota Sick and Safe Leave Law. Earned sick and safe time is paid. Leave employers must provide to employees in Minnesota that can be used for certain reasons, including when an employee is sick, to care for a sick family member, or to seek assistance. If an employee... Yeah, it sounds like that should be... That should have been a thing like years ago. Jeremy says these were all things that he campaigned on. Jeremy says that him and his girlfriend met on Discord. We met in person for the first time in May. Protect uh, Protected women's health care rights when Roe v. Wade was overturned. To the point where even people who are seeking care from other states can come to Minnesota, get the care they need, like uh, get the baby killed, and not have any legal repercussions with their state laws. I always get emails from people saying, EZ, why do you always say they're killing their babies? Well, look, I've never really been one of flowery language to try to soften the blow. I've made it uh, very, very well known that um, how I feel about abortion. I support a woman's right to slaughter her baby. I am, I am on your side. Slaughtering should be your right in America. Jimmy says, make abortion mandatory. Yes. Everyone should have to have at least one abortion. (laughs) Signed a $2.3 billion education budget into law. The single largest investment in public, public education in state history. Tim Walls, governor of Minnesota, did all these things. Expanded voting rights. I wonder what that means. Tax cuts for working middle class families. Lowered prescription costs. I'm curious as to how. Increased access to affordable housing. Literally just signed into law that menstrual products 
should be available in school boys' bathrooms. Wow. Yeah, I don't... Um, I guess, you know, nowadays that's that's a normal thing where, I mean, that this conversation is even taking place. We've really come a long way. When I was school-aged, we didn't even know that gay people existed amongst us. And that's no lie, no hyperbole. Even in, uh, even in college, I was like, ah, I, I don't even, uh, nobody I know is gay. So wrong. Now, you can buy tampons in boys' bathrooms or get them for free. Uh, legalized cannabis. Signed into law, historic bipartisan elder abuse litigation to regulate assisted living centers. Oh, I, I don't support that one. <clears throat> I'm kidding. I sound like a free, I sound like free beer now. Ban medical debt from impacting credit scores and prevented medical providers from turning you away if you have medical debt. Signed a bill into law banning hidden junk fees and cracking down on fraudulent ticket sales. All right. Um, so this guy, Tim Walls, is the running mate with Harris. I'm anxious to see how this goes. Are they going to debate, by the way, Trump and Harris? Uh, there was talk about... Um, he wanted one on um, on uh, Fox News, and she wanted it on ABC, sticking to the original plan. And he's like, "No," and it's like, uh, "Come on, that is that's something that I would like to see." I'm anxious to see how she does, you know, toe to toe with him. Okay. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you as always to uh, one of my latest sponsors, Kuiper Tree Care. Now, if you are in West Michigan, uh, I want you to think about reaching out to Kuiper Tree Care. The certified arborists on staff can help you for anything at all. You can call 616 828 8225. That's 616 828 8225. Or Go to tri God damn it. Kuipertreecare.com. When you're on the website, you can also fill out the contact form and just say hello that way. So um, they do just about everything. I mean, seriously. Tree removal, tree pruning. We had both those things done here at the house. Move a tree, prune a tree, ground the stump. If you need land cleared, they can take care of that. Storm cleanup, stump grinding, tree risk assessment, all the, all the things you could possibly want from a tree care company taken care of by Kuiper Tree Care. Go to KuiperTreeCare.com. That's K-U-I-P-E-R TreeCare.com. I don't think they're affiliated with Kevin Kuiper. Kuiper, Kuipers, I don't know which one you are. I forget, always. So there you go. Anything, like at our house, we had this tree, it was just, disgusting looking pear tree way overgrown growing over the house destroying the roof getting in the gutters looks like shit drops these stupid berries uh the 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 fucking robins eat the berries and then they shit purple crab apple shit all over my car and it's awful kuiper tree care showed up they took care of the problem quite quickly and efficiently a crew of four did that they even helped me navigate the uh, hornet's nest that was in there. They took care of that. It was a group effort. We sprayed it. Then they cut down the limb, threw it through the chipper. Everything is fine. Get a free estimate. If you are in need of tree care in West Michigan, I want you to call or text right now, 616-828-8225. Kuiper Tree Care, 616-828-8225. Um, Kevin Kuyper says, nope, no relation. All 
All right. Thank you to Kuiper Tree Care. Also, thank you to Joe Martinez from A&E Heating and Cooling. I know he's not listening because he would have been bitching at me over to the talk about Michigan. Uh, 616-516-8579 for A&E Heating and Cooling. So work hard to make sure that uh, everything is taken care of on your end with your AC, with your furnace at A&E Heating and Cooling. 616-516-8579 today. All right. Buy now, refinance later. From anywhere in the U.S., the Mario Flores Lakeshore team of Van Dyke Mortgage, 231-332-6505. They're getting set to lower the interest rate. It'll be just a matter of time when we can start uh, having that luxury. But if you're thinking about buying a house, you're going to want to get pre-approved, and then you're going to want to put a bid in on a house that's, uh, I don't know, ten, twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 less than what you're approved for because you're going to have to go up. The market is right now where people get in bidding wars. You try to sell a house for two hundred thousand dollars, you get two hundred and fifty. It's unbelievable. Two three one three three two sixty five zero five. Buy now, refinance later. Yeah, the Dow got fucking the Dow and the Nasdaq. Well, just markets in general got the shit kicked out of them uh, yesterday. Uh, a lot of that had to do with Warren Buffett, the Oracle of Omaha. He sold off 55% of his Apple shares. That was part of it. And uh, investors got spooked and they freaked out. And uh, the market lost a lot of its value. Like they're saying in the trillions of dollars and money lost. But already today, they've made nearly half of that back. uh, Up 466.88 points. After yesterday's plunge of twelve hundred, so it's re- it's rebounding. That is good. Do not look at your four hundred one k. Do not pay attention to it. It's just something to talk about. That's all this is. Something to talk about. Was that song Bonnie Raitt? Let's give them something to talk about. Well, they did. They sure as hell did. All right, right here in the great state of Michigan, we got a new law put on the books by our great governor that if you have a pistol or a gun in your house and there's kids that are over your house, you have to lock up your weaponry. It's simple. And there was just one the other day, a a two-and-a-half-year-old in Detroit who was at the babysitter's house, and uh, the the two-and-a-half-year-old got a hold of a pistol and, Uh, shot himself in the belly. Kid survived. Right after this law went into effect here, that Whitmer signed into law is a great law. I mean, honestly, I'll tell you, if there's no one in my, if there's no kids in my house, my guns are in lots of locations um, where I know where they are, but they're not locked. Because I I need my guns. If somebody fucking invades the house, I know a lot of you think I'm crazy to think that, but I don't give a shit. I want to be about an arm's distance away from a gun. But when I know my grandkids are coming over, I round them all up, put them in the safe, and lock them up. It's that simple. Well, this fucking idiot, of course, did not do that. And if someone said to you, hey, uh, EZ, or said to you, uh, what do you think will be the, uh, what do you think a guy will look like who is the first one to get busted for this law? As Piano Finger Banger says, you put your grandkids in the safe. Yeah, I put my grandkids in the safe with the guns. If someone said, Does this look like a a guy who would break that law? And yeah, it does. Because he looks retarded. My God, you asshole. This idiot did not lock up his gun. Dead kid. Carl Robart of Nuevo County. Now, you got to understand, Nuevo County is right at 
or near the hard living line. And anytime you get within a handful of miles of the hard living line, oh God. A man whose grandson was shot and killed with a gun in his home pleaded no contest Monday to violating Michigan's safe storage law. How terrible. A minimum term sentencing of one and a half to three years in this plea. So they basically said, all right, give us a plea. You're going to plead no contest. You're going to be convicted. And because you uh, pled, you know, uh, you've saved us a lot of time, money, and effort. So you're going to be locked away for a period of time. Dumbass will be sentenced October 7th. God damn. You know, that's the type of thing where it's just stupidity. You know, this guy, he might be a, a good citizen all of his years of his life, but then they make this law. And I guess you could be argued that he didn't even know the law. But you got to start somewhere. Somebody has to be the one to be the guinea pig, okay, who fucks up. And then this happens. And then as tragic as this is, because, I mean, there's a fucking dead kid involved here. Um, you know, you, you then it's up to people to uh, spread the word. Uh, use this guy as an example. And that, that might be exactly what his lawyer says. You're just using him as an example. Well, yeah, of course. Of course we're using him as an example because we don't want this. We don't want kids to be dead, dumbass. That's how laws go. When you make a law, there's going to be some dumb fuck who breaks it first. Okay. Who doesn't have any idea. But at the end of the day, if you're that fucking stupid that you need, if people in Michigan are so dumb that they need laws about keeping something as deadly as a firearm safe when there's kids around. We need laws for that because people that are north of the hard living line or near it, they don't think that there's danger in that. That's because they're fucking stupid. So that's what you have here. Um, his wife and grandmother of the child is facing the same charge. Wow. They are the um, maternal grandparents of the five-year-old. They left a 12-gauge shotgun behind a bedroom door in their home outside Nuevo, where the grandkids were watching movies in April. Hey, friends, it's Joe Palizzi with my latest and greatest marketing partner, Mint Mobile. I know a lot of you have been to the ringer when it comes to costs with big wireless. As you know, what you see is never what you get. You ever have that happen where you get in there and you're like, okay, they're, they're like, you're going to get this, this, and this, and this, and then you pay us this. And you go, oh, yeah. And then, like, you get the bill and you're like, what the hell just happened? It's like bait and switch. And then you call in and you realize that you're screwed. So you're like, oh, my God, I might as well just keep overpaying for this. Never again. Enter. Mint Mobile. You never have to worry about the gotchas ever again. When Mint Mobile says 15 bucks a month, when you purchase a three-month plan, they mean it. I've done this. You should too. Say bye-bye to the overpriced wireless plans, jaw-dropping monthly bills, and unexpected overages. Mint Mobile is here to the rescue with premium wireless plans starting at $15 a month. My God! To get this new customer offer and your new three-month premium wireless plan for just $15 a month, go to mintmobile.com slash zane. mintmobile.com slash zane. Cut your wireless bill to $15 a month and give the other guys the big heave-ho mintmobile.com slash Zane. All right, fine print time. $45 upfront payment required. That's equivalent to the 15 bucks a month. New customers on first three-month plan only. 
Speeds slower above 40 gigs on unlimited plan. Additional taxes, fees, and restrictions apply. See Mint Mobile for details. The incident went down. I don't want to talk anymore about the incident, but it's just fucking horrible. Carl told cops he had no idea the weapon was loaded. He said he had it for self-defense and to kill critters. It had been in the same spot for 10 years, he told police. Yeah, let this be a lesson. Doesn't matter where you're listening. Some places have laws, like in Michigan. If you got a weapon out, kid gets it, someone dies, you're going to prison. That's it. There's no way around it. If you at your house have weapons and there's young people there, you have to lock them up. Or at least, I mean, Jesus Christ, put it in your fucking trunk and lock it if you don't have a safe. If you know there's going to be kids there. Jesus Christ. Uh, Maureen says, or Nick says, I think you can move the hard living line down to M57 when far from the lake shore. I need to take a look at the map, Nick, to determine that, but I'll take your word for it. Maureen says, LOL, Nick, I'm about 10 miles south of M57 in Owasso. So, yeah, we need to take a look, but generally, the hard living line, I mean, if you are north of M- of uh, US 10, it's for sure going to be hard living line. But we might need to take another look and, um, you know, draw different lines. It's kind of like when they redraw district uh, voting areas. Nick says M57 runs through Greenville. Okay, well, then there you go. Bob says there are stupid laws because of stupid people everywhere. They had to put it on the books in Pennsylvania, making it illegal to smoke cigarettes in the car if a child is in the car, too. Jeremy says we need to gerrymander the hard... Jeremy says we need to gerrymander the hard living line. Yeah, I I think so. Um, You know what's weird about smoking inside of the car? Is how... No one thought that was a big deal when I was a kid. Like dad would smoke and mom in the car and it the, the windows are closed. The only time they would roll the window down is to throw what was left of the cigarette out so that it would hit the dry brush on our way up north and then cause like a forest fire. You could smoke everywhere. And, and we did. Everyone did. Maize and Blue says, I miss the smoking and non-smoking areas in restaurants. They were right next to each other. Smoking or non? It's so true. I don't even like to... If I smoke a dart, I don't want to smoke it inside. I can't do it. It's got to be outside. I don't like to smoke. I don't like the smell of it being too strong. I like the smell moving away from me all the time. Jimmy has the question, what is the hard living line? All right, buddy. Here in Michigan, there is a roadway. And if you're north of it, typically you're like a hill jack, poor, sleep with your sister, look like fuck, missing teeth, alcoholic, Loser, homeless, piece of shit. That's the hard living line. Uneducated, dumbass. Okay? It's speaking in general generalizations here. That's what the hard living line is. Every state has it. Like, for Maine, it's just across the state line. As soon as you get into Maine... That's the hard living line.
By the way, the guy who um when I when we went to Maine this year, um there's a story behind the guy who ran the uh RV park. Cuz we show up in this uh town which is actually like 45 minutes out of Acadia. Uh Goldsboro, Maine, I think is the name of it. And uh this dude, he was set to to retire. And um, him and his wife are looking for a piece of land, a piece of property. And where they were at in Maine, you could not put one structure on, based on, I don't know why, but if you own a piece of property, you can't, you couldn't just put one structure based on the town charter or something like that. So what they did was they decided to make a RV park. So imagine that you're going from set to retire and do nothing in your sixties or seventies to owning a goddamn RV park, which is nothing but work. And when he explained it to me, I said, buddy, I can't think of anything I would like to do less if I was retiring. You know, when I retire, I want to retire. I want to stay up late. I want to wake up late. I want to eat everything in sight. And, you know, fucking not work. Why are you working? I don't understand. Nice park, though. Except there was no goddamn laundromat. Next time, install a laundromat. I cannot believe you did not have a laundromat there. Uh, in Maine, it's north, and it's north of Waterville. It's like a completely different state. Surely that lady with the saggy boobs that slapped the lady in the car from the store yesterday uh, lives north of the hard living line. No, no, no. She's right in Grand Rapids. Jeremy says, I think she lives south, but was probably raised north. You know what they say. You can take the lady out of the hard living but you can't take the hard living out of the lady. Exactly. Oh my God. So true. Okay. This is the face of a guy who's completely fucked up. Who every time he tries to like convince you that he's turned it around, he doesn't. That is Wes Scantlin from Puddle of Mud. I think Scantlin has kind of like been trying to, um, it's kind of been suggested that he's like turned it around. Maybe go on a, uh, a, a tour again with Puddle of Mud. I don't know. But uh, we we got an issue now because he got pulled over somewhere in California, and then they ran the plates and they uh, they discovered that they had a warrant for his arrest. I guess he brought a pistol to an airport or something like that, and they didn't like that, and he got in trouble. They pulled over his Hummer in Burbank, just some neighborhood for just a typical traffic violation. They asked him for the ID. When they found out he had an active warrant from a previous case, they said, hey, Mr. Scantlin, uh, we're going to have to have you step out of the car. We're going to have to arrest you. And he um, he did what any uh, clear-thinking individual would do, and that is said no. Now, this is California, so you really got to fuck up for them to, you know, Get aggressive with you. Please get out. No, no, no. So then they call a crisis negotiator. Now, if this were like Houston, they'd have just busted the window and pulled them through it. But this is California. So then the crisis negotiator has to show up. And he's like, ah, no, no, thanks. I'm going to stay in here. In the 
Hummer with them, my windows rolled up. They got him to roll down the window. And they sprayed him with pepper spray. That did not work. Hours pass. They call the SWAT team at 4 a.m. They break the car window. And then they shot him with a non-lethal pepper ball. Now, I don't know if that means a pepper ball hits him in the face and explodes, but that did it. And uh, Wes Scantlin, she fucking hates me, gets out of the car. I don't know if you can hear O'Neal. He's having a dream. Um, he was taken to the hospital to get his eyes flushed out from the pepper balls. But in the end, he was okay. He was then booked at the jail for an outstanding warrant and the new charge of resisting arrest. We're told he was incited and released with a court date set for August 20. What a fucking moron. Where do you think that's going to go? Jesus. What a dumbass. Wes Scantlin. All right. Let's see. I talked about Kamala Harris. I actually don't have a ton of things left to talk about today. Uh, Kenny just sent me a message uh, on the, um, what do you call it? On the chat. From M Live just now, tornado warnings issued as storms enter Michigan. Oh. I need to check that out, buddy. Thank you. Yeah, it's been weird here today. We've had thunderstorms and shit like that. Um, I think we're fine where I am. Yeah. Um, speaking of weather, I don't know if you heard about this guy who was walking across. It was at Death Valley, the hottest place on the planet. And... Um, there was a tourist there visiting. Now, I I don't, um, I can't think of a place that would uh, intimidate me more than Death Valley in that area of California. Because whether you're on a motorcycle or whether you're in a car, if you break down and you're anywhere out of the way, you're doomed. Okay. A guy from Belgium was visiting. You know, I think that that'd be fun to like, okay, you get there, you you get a feeling of how hot it is. You're in an oven virtually. And then you get the fuck out of there. I was looking at the average temperatures in, um, at death Valley and it's pretty much may till December. You're dealing with debilitating heat. So you have December, January, February, March, April. April average high is 90. But so you have four months of decent weather. They get no rain there. Why do people want to visit this place? A guy was walking around wearing his flip flops. When they either broke or he lost them in the sand. At the time, the air temperature was 123. The sand temperatures would have been much, much hotter. So then this guy's feet start burning. And then you're fucked. I mean, what are you to do? Drop to your knees? No, you're going to burn your knees. So uh, he's getting more and more burnt. The man's family called for help and recruited other park visitors who carried the guy to the parking lot. 
Uh, park rangers determined that the man needed to be transported to a level one trauma center quickly due to the burns and the pain level. He had third degree burns. It was so hot, though, that a helicopter could not land. I guess when you have that much heat, it can reduce the rotor lift. So then they had to drive to a place where it was much cooler. 109. Barefoot on sand can cause injuries sometimes known as beach feet. Third degree burns. Um, it can damage the muscles and the bones. Holy shit. I don't know if that happened to this guy, but my God. Third degree burns destroy the top two layers of skin. It can cause damage to muscles, tendons, and bones underneath the skin. Nerve endings are often damaged, resulting in numbness. Oh my God. That's like me. I had this, this burn on my arm uh, March 18th. It was blistering. I don't know if it was third degree. I think it was definitely a second degree burn. My God. Jimmy says, guy now looks like Freddy Krueger. You remember that guy a few years ago when they, he was uh, he was busted and they, uh, they put him face down on the asphalt and it was burning his face? Oh, he was screaming, oh my God, stop it. Jeremy says EZ was hoping to see some feet. He saw a person burns feet in Death Valley and clicked uh, the headline half-mast. You sicko. Okay. It's happened again here in Michigan. Uh, somebody dumped a crocodile, not a crocodile, a gator into like a lake. This is ridiculous. In fact, I remember one time I was doing a triathlon over at Lake Mexico when I used to do that shit. <coughs> and um, they pulled a dead one out because it was a really cold start to the uh, uh, spring when this race was. And some asshole put a crocodile in the water and uh, the fucking thing died. Idiots decide that they want to own a crocodile. And then they get the goddamn thing and then the thing grows up and then they're like, oh no, I can't take care of a crocodile. I better uh, just let it go. And uh, that is what happened here. Continues tonight. For those who live uh, near and off of Crockery Lake, after multiple reports came in over the weekend of a sighting. News 8's Megan Bunchman went over to the lake to try to spot the reptile. Well, unfortunately, I lost power at that exact moment. Oh, boy. Anyway, um, I was able to get power back and a, a regular Patreon podcast happened. So sorry for the shortness of this today. Mother Nature took over. And uh, yeah, so back at it tomorrow with another free podcast where at some point I'll, uh, I'll, I'll finish up this, this alligator in the lake story. All right, bye.